So we're not doing this live because one, we're back together sharing a microphone. This is going to be awkward. My dad has dropped me up to your house and he's sat in the corner and I can see him. So this is very strange, but maybe preparation for our hockey live show. You can't say anything yet because I'm holding the microphone, so bear with me. This podcast is sponsored by NordVPN. We're here today to talk about Aston Villa 3, Bournemouth 1. What a lovely afternoon at Villa Park. Edit here. Yes, <laughs> we, we, are, we are recording in bizarre circumstances with your, your dad like a little groupie sat in the corner. Uh, but bless him, I'm sure uh, he won't boo if we if we stink the place out. I just thought it was a really brilliant performance today um, in terms of after the week that we've had. It could have been after the Lord Mayor's show, but it was just really professional. Uh, I think I said to you before we started that we haven't really missed Douglas Louise in the last couple of games, which shows how the, the fringe players have, have stepped up. Um, I just thought some of the quality of our football, you know, the the... the the football that we played, particularly for the goals that we scored, was was brilliant. Um, and it could have easily been, you know, we keep saying that we keep referring to the Villa of old, how Villa of old would have let us down or, you know, but they managed to, to step up again. I just think it's, I think it's massive now. And, you know, <laughs> the worrying thing is our destiny is properly in our own hands now. We've just got to, we've just got to maintain it, haven't we, for how many games we've got left now? I've forgotten. Yeah, you know, like you say, destiny in our own hands is something that, we should relish, I'm sure Emery and the lads will be relishing. If we just keep winning games, we're going to finish in the top four and we're going to win a trophy. Like It's basically as simple as that. Obviously much more difficult to do that, but I think John said before, we are the fourth best team in England. We just now need to prove it by keep chipping away at results and today is the, the perfect example of that. A game that I was relatively worried about going into Bournemouth. I think if you take away their start to the season, which was obviously famously bad, since then, they're pretty much a top six side in terms of form. They'd probably be better than Man United, for example. Um, so this was a game that was, you know, had all the hallmarks of a potential banana skin. To go one nil down again, the Villa of old may crumble a little bit. And oh, well, it's tired legs. They put a lot of effort in over the last few days. If they do lose today or only get a point, you know, you know, it is what it is. That's what you know. They've kind of run out of steam. To come back and, and, and go on to win the game in, in style in the end as well. Like you say, some of the quality of football is, is unbelievable these days. I feel like it's not great for a podcast. I'm running out of things to say and how to describe how good Villa are in terms of the football they play. It's not just that we like Man United, they're, they're up there because they manage to scrape wins here and there. We play brilliant football. Some of it is, is, is the best I've seen and my dad has seen as well. We were talking in the car on the way up here. It's, it's some of the best that we've ever had. So, yeah, I don't know how to describe it anymore. I feel like I'm running out of phrases to say how good Uno Emery is and these lads are. And it's a special special bunch of lads, aren't they? It shouldn't surprise me, but the con- considering the size of the prize, uh, is that that's half term going? <laughs> considering the size of the prize, Champions League football that's within touching distance now, how confident we are. You know, John McGinn's like dropping the shoulder in his own penalty box to, you know, letting the, letting the ball roll across him. And, and then you've got, Yuri Tillman, who's played into a tight space, this in the first half as well, you know, halfway inside his own heart. And just he just pulls out a casual kind of 360 spin to get out of it. And then we've got Watkins doing that, doing that as well. Um, we've got Morgan Rogers, who's is he 20 ish? Something like that, who who looks he's playing with a kind of confidence and swagger of somebody who's played in the Premier League a lot longer than than three or four months. Um just brilliant. The, the, they just don't seem. They could have buckled under pressure by now, and they could have buckled under fatigue, and they could have used all the mitigation of having players suspended, players injured. But I know we spoke before about the, the no excuse culture, but I think they genuinely believe that. I think they think if we don't win every single football match, we're letting the manager down because he's instilled so. You know, his game plan is meticulous each week, and he's instilled so much confidence in the way we, we, we play that. They don't seem to blame anybody, and you know, even when you you kind of can see goals and Cash has given that penalty away today, and you could see. I've just watched the replay back. You see in his face, it's one of those ones where he's not going to protest because he knows straight away. But you're not. You don't get his teammates digging him out and saying, you know, come on, what you're doing, you're being stupid and stuff. It's almost like no, Cash didn't concede the penalty. We conceded the penalty <laughs> as a whole. Um, yeah, like you said, it's it's going to mean uh, I'm going to plug our live event. Our live event in a in a 
month and a half time or whatever, if we've run out of things to say by now, you've got to do something in the next couple of weeks, Phil. You've got nothing left to say. Yeah, I mean, this we talk about kind of like season defining moments, don't we? As you as you go through, and there some of the things that you pick out in hindsight. Really, last year that goal away at Leicester, that, that's what set us on our trajectory. But this week or this ten days or so in particular, to beat Lille in the first leg in in the Europa Conference League, to then go to Arsenal and, and beat them get the job done in Lille, yes, technically lost on the night, but obviously win on penalties and you win the game and go through to the semi-final. And then, as we said, this game could have been billed as, well, that's where they run out of steam. Bournemouth are a tricky, tricky customers to deal with. Um, now we've got a week's of preparation for Chelsea. If we have if we have dropped points to Bournemouth, we can kind of reset and go from there. To still churn out another victory, and as I say, in style as well, this period of the season is what is season defining. It gets us through to a semi-final. It cements our place in the top four for now. Yes, Spurs have games, games in hand, but points on the board is is what we all want, isn't it? Spurs have to win those games now just to even get back level with us. So we are in the driving seat for top four. And as I said at the, at the top of the show, if we, kept winning, if we keep winning, job's done, which is a mad position to be in, isn't it? As a Villa fan, knowing you're on the cusp of something and it's in our hands to go and do it. Have you ever had anything like this before where you think, oh, if we just keep doing this, we're going to be okay? Or do you always expect the worst and the, 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 everything to fall off? You know me that I always expect the worst. This this manager's trying to coach me out of it, to be honest, trying to say, trust the process and we'll get there. Um, I think, in, is it right that we play ahead of Tottenham again yeah. next weekend? Like Saturday night, like I so that could become nine points. Nine points. <laughs> Maybe when it becomes nine points, I'll, I'll start to believe it. I was going to ask you, there's a slight change of thing. Did you get to the ground early for this? Uh, have you seen any footage of it or anything? I've not seen anything. Yeah, there was a, a few thousand there for the guy next to me. He said he went and he said we left early for it. But like they could get nowhere near the front. So the people that were there must have been there from the early doors. Me and John spoke in the preview about the atmosphere and how much we can kind of help to, to get the job over the line. And, you know, if you're kind of trying to force this atmosphere on the fourth game of the season, it does feel a little bit like, you know, that kind of tin pot thing of, oh, look at us, we're trying to kind of create something. But we're in this moment now where us as fans as well, we go to the game now, and if you just do your job today, we're on we're on the on the verge of something here. So we should be doing that for, for Liverpool and um, for Chelsea next week as well. This should be the mentality now going into every single game. We have to turn up as well to help get the lads over the line. Martinez said in his post-match on Thursday that there's going to be some tired legs out there and we're going to need the fans. Couldn't bloody tell, could you, that they played so many games, they didn't look fatigued. All the stuff about Pep Guardiola moaning about fixture congestion. Are oh, we playing on the Wednesday? Why are we playing on Saturday for? Firstly, get over yourself. But Villa don't have any excuse of that. Emery's not coming out saying, oh yeah, we, you know, we've got tired legs in there. And just watching the game, yeah, there's a couple of moments where you think, oh, maybe catching up with catching up with catching up with us a little bit. But Bournemouth side that are known for pressing hard and getting at you, Villa looked like the fitter team. Villa looked like the team that had had weeks to prepare for it. Not that they'd just come off the back of an away trip as well. Man City obviously played at home in midweek. Um, put everything into that extra time and penalties. You wouldn't you wouldn't have known that Villa have just done four games in ten days. Yeah, I'm not big on this. We've played too many games and stuff. I mean, what's the alternative? Don't don't compete in Europe then. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get knocked out of the cup competitions nice and early. I don't know what you thought about man of the match today, but I had three potentials. I had Ollie Watkins. I know he didn't score, but I thought he, he was really up for it. I thought he was really up for trying to get... <laughs> it's mad. So I thought a couple of times he was probably went for goal when he probably should have got his head up and looked for passes. But the two assists, it was two assists, wasn't it? Two assists that he's got, I thought I thought were class. I thought he was good. I thought Morgan Rogers gets better every time. Every time I see him. And um I thought Tielemans was was just brilliant today. Just you know I don't think I've probably appreciated what a good footballer he is in terms of, you know, he doesn't do the simple pass all the time. He'll have a look up and he'll try and yeah kind of change the angles and, and, and try and try and thread balls between the lines. I thought I thought he was brilliant. And that's not to take anything away from any of the other the eight starters that are, that I haven't mentioned. But you know, at the start of the season, would you have thought that we probably wouldn't have known Morgan Rogers really. Um so you wouldn't think he'd become a, a you know a really influential player in our running. And Tielemans with that, that slow sluggish start, you'd have thought, well He's not going to be the one who steps up and, and helps get us over the line. Uh, Watkins, perhaps, yeah, you'd have thought he'd have, he'd have been one of the, the, the main men. Um, but just the quality, the quality of the goals, and just just thinking like the the first goal, Diaby is the one who's won the ball. Yeah, you know, you know, and it looked like quite a kind of a solid challenge as well. And then Bailey's just thought, yeah, I'll just whip it with the outside of my boot. 
And then Rogers, you think, well, how have you made the angle for that? And his little kind of roll over the over the top of the ball to to get the the shooting angle. And that's just that's just goal number one. Yeah, it was Rogers' ball to Watkins, wasn't it, for the second goal? And then Watkins has just played a kind of eye on the needle pass through to Diaby, and there's a slight momentary momentary worry. He was offside, um, but he's he's tucked it away. And then the last goal, it was almost as if. I think everybody had kind of given up the ghost, except for Watkins, who started the move and then just appeared out of nowhere. Um, I thought it was Watkins' goal. Yeah, to round the goalkeeper. I think it was going wide anyway. Um, and then Bailey's just tapped it, tapped it in from close range. And it's just, I think we're get, getting the reward for, for the Emery way of playing football, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's I said before, haven't I? I used to love the days under Big Ron where they'd play Life of Riley by Lightning Seeds on Match of the Day, Goal of the Month every week, and you'd have a Dwight York diving header, or you'd have a brilliant move, or you'd have a Steve Staunton pile driver, or whatever. I, it's a shame they don't. I mean, I've probably got a DVD player somewhere. I've probably got a VHS video recorder somewhere, but it's a shame that you can't get those. I suppose you can just by looking on YouTube. But do you know what I mean? It's a shame you, you can't get it gift wrapped in a bow because some of the goals, some of the quality of football that we played this year, hopefully it's just a precursor for what's going to come over the next two, three, four, five years. Yeah. But uh, I think we've really been treated to some um, some special goals. I thought that Watkins had scored his 20th Premier League goal and I think the whole ended as well, singing do 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 Ollie Watkins. My dad would like me to mention that he knew it was Bailey's goal from at the time. He'd realised that Bailey had got a toe on it to put it in. It was going wide, wasn't it? It's not going in without Bailey's uh, touch, but one of those ones that Watkins gets the assist for. And it's not He's not played the ball intentionally as an assist. He's got obviously four goal, but he, he gets it. I think he's, if he's not alive to that, no, no. the goalkeeper, because where he's come from, he's kind of run diagonally across... Yeah to get the ball. So I think he, he deserves the assist. And just briefly on, on Watkins, might you know, like yeah, might as well. <laughs> Some of the stuff, and I'm not, I don't really want to get too involved in the Watkins, Ivan Tony kind of thing. Some of the analysis we've, we've seen this week, and I think it was highlighted across social media today, where I think it was Glenn Murray, actually, there's a clip of him who's, he's got the, he's got the graphic on screen. <laughs> And I know I know Tony's missed half a season for for obvious reasons, but even if he'd have you'd have doubled his his tally, he wouldn't be near Watkins. And he's like he says all this gushing stuff about Watkins. He says you can see it with your own eyes in terms of what the graphic and the and the stats say. And then he still says that that, that Ivan Tony because he can put the stick the ball away from the spot, which so can Ollie Watkins as we as we saw in high pressure situations the other week. So um, oh, it's not my place to kind of promote Ollie Watkins for to play for England in the Euros if people can't if Gareth Southgate and the pundits can't see that that's, that's up to them isn't it keeping fresh for Villa you're right the fact that it wasn't even mentioned that Watkins had scored a penalty in a shootout like scoring a penalty to me in a game is very different to doing it in a shootout as well Watkins waited two and a half minutes or something for that one on Thursday and yes he's not a great penalty taker but he literally just did it to go oh yeah but still still Tony go, goes for me is madness just on Watkins when you say about man of the match I think he probably would be my my shout that I'd go for I think that was like a masterclass in team teamwork, selflessness, hold up play. Like he did everything but score is the cliche, isn't it? Gets the two assists, but he's involved in everything that we do. And I think he's always been good at the hold up side of things and getting his teammates involved. But that one, that game specifically there for me was the kind of like the best of Ollie Watkins. He does everything but get the goal itself. But he's he's the focal point for everything. And yes, Ollie Watkins may not work for England or he may not work for another side, but in, in Emory system, he plays that role to perfection. And for me, that was a masterclass in what Ollie Watkins offers to Villa specifically. Yeah, I think he's got better as a link man as well. I think there might have been a criticism, probably from me, um, when he first joined that he probably took too long to get the ball down under control. But I think he's he's better at that now. He's better at knowing when to keep it and when, when to release it. Um, you could just see. I think once he created, once he got his assists, you could think you could see him thinking. I think there was a chance in the last ten minutes um, where he's probably tried. You know, he's cut back on himself. Yeah, you know. And I think if the game hadn't been won by then, he would have looked yeah. up and picked a better option. But I think it does mean. Well, why wouldn't it as a, as a striker to to get that those twenty goals and to get that you know to try and get that golden boot? So. You know, these these are our little kind of dreams now. These are on our wish list, aren't they? We obviously want to. We're so greedy now, aren't we? We want to finish in the top four, win the win the Conference League, get Ollie Watkins to a golden boot, and then better that next season if we can. 
just a word on, on Morgan Rogers. Then we've mentioned him in passing as one of your picks for a man of the match candidate. We've spoken before, and I think we'll do a whole podcast about him at some stage. That the kind of rise that he's had from Man City's academy to Middlesbrough to Villa in the space of twelve months, pretty much, and a player that probably would join not expecting to play as much football as he has. I don't think any fans would have expected him to, at least anyway. He probably would have been a rotation option alongside Zaniolo maybe for Jacob Ramsey's spot. Ramsey obviously has the, the injury problems that he has and Rodgers is kind of thrust into it, but not thrust into it as a, as a bit part player who looks out of his depth. Somebody who you can tell is, is a youngster kind of trying to ply, ply his um, trade. Come in and been a serious part to to this system and be really, really important to Emery and, and pop up in key moments. Scored against Brentford, obviously scored today as well. Took his goal brilliantly to chop back on the other side, as you mentioned there's some comparisons with Jacob Ramsey as is he better than him? And I think that's firstly too early to say, and I'm not sure I agree with it because Jacob Ramsey is a, is a great footballer and it's probably easy to forget that when we've not seen basically any of him this season. But what Rogers does, he, I think he probably stands out more because of his physical presence as well. But when he gets picks up the ball centrally and bursts forward as, as Ramsey kind of does as well, he's so strong, he's so agile, but he's so quick on the turn as well. We said during watching the game, like for a guy who's clearly a, a massive yeah. the fact that he can turn on a sixpence and, and kind of dart off in different directions he's he's got a bit of everything and I didn't really know much about him before we signed obviously he was the, the top goal the top goal scorer in the in the league cup with Middlesbrough when we signed him and he kind of popped up with a decent finish here and there but not watched enough of him to go oh yeah he's this player I didn't expect him to be that and I don't think anyone expected him to come in and, and be as important as he was so Fair play to him for for the age that he is and the impact that he's had. That we now look at Morgan Rogers, the, the twenty year old, if that is correct, uh, as a, a kind of a vital cog in, in Emery's system for these last six or seven games. Yeah, like you said, I think there's a moment in the first half. Well, it, to me, he looked like the most likely to make make something happen uh, in the first half. Anyway, you thought, you know, we need to be patient because it's been a hell of a week. But he looked like the liveliest who could make something happen. And there's a ball where Martinez has found him with a low pass from from the edge of our penalty box and he's just span. I think that was the time when he set Watkins free, I think, and Watkins has had deflected effort just, just over the bar. But it's weird. I think, I think I'm right in saying that there's a, I'm sure I've seen like an under England under 15s team sheet doing the round on Twitter. I don't think you've seen that. And these, I think Bellingham's on it. I think um, Morgan Rogers in it. I, I think Cole Palmer might be, might be on it as well. And, there's a few others who have kind of dotted around. There's a few others who have just kind of disappeared. And it's just, I don't know, we, we played the Howls Owen card, didn't we, the other day about talking about how, you know, it was the mighty Hallis Hawks or whatever who set, set him off on his path. But it probably shows my ignorance that I didn't know more about this <laughs> this lad a, until he's pro- properly arrived back on our, on our doorstep at, at Villa Park. But... Um, Again, my ignorance, but I thought he'd probably come. We'd, we'd sign him. He might play a couple of games for the, you know, the, the under twenty threes, and he might get ten minutes here and there. But the fact that Emery has seen enough to say, you know, we've signed Jay. You. You're an Aston Villa first team player. Aston Villa first team players play for Aston Villa first team. So go and show what you can do. Um, so he's been a, an unexpected treat, I think, in the second half of the season. Anyone else you want to talk about specifically? The bloody referee again. He just really annoyed me. Did you see when he got in the way of Rogers? Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> and, yeah, and he just didn't. It was about twice. I think Rogers tried to take him on two or three times, and he he just was one of those really. We use the word is it pernickety? Is that the word that, that we use? Just one of those ones who would just you know if the ball was taken two yards away, from, a free kick was taken two yards away from where it should have been. Just really, really annoying. I can't remember who it was. Can you? like a bit of a chunky fella um, but I've, I don't think I've seen him but he irritated me anyway so yeah there's obviously the couple pe- couple of penalty shots wasn't there Cashew's penalty was a penalty there's no doubt in my mind that he, it was a silly thing to do but ultimately we've got away with it so I'm not going to hammer him too much for that there was the Watkins one that went down I think it's probably given as a shoulder barge but it, at the time you think oh, mm, sure. did it yeah I think that probably was one that you've You've probably seen them given, but again, ultimately, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. It would have been interesting to see who would have taken that. Would Watkins have maybe stepped up after his one in midweek to think, I need the goal, I've, I've won it, I'll take it. Obviously, no Louise to take it. Anyway, side point. Just another one quickly to end. Is, um, 
Emmy Martinez, who does Emmy Martinez things by saving shots that you don't expect him to, and yeah, a brilliant, brilliant goalkeeper. Just the thing I wanted to mention was the the reception that he got after Thursday. Obviously, like we talk a lot about the atmosphere and it got to get up for it to help get over the line for Bournemouth. But if anything, if for the vast majority of Villa fans there today who obviously weren't there on Thursday, it's also appreciation for what they just did away in, in Europe. The massive cheer that Emmy Martinez gets uh, when his team when the team sheets read out. When he runs over to the whole N4 kickoff, I said to my dad at the time, like, how good must it feel to be him in that moment? The whole crowd going mental for you. Like, like he's a cocky, arrogant guy anyway, but that must make you feel 20 feet tall when, when you've got 40,000 behind you like that. Can you imagine him, can't you, Martin, as being like the kind of showman, like the singer of a rock band and kind of coming out and taking that claim and, and that kind of thing. It's funny because I think I heard a little bit of the post-match podcast the other day were you talking about who would have gone in goal if martinez would have been sent off and you did you opt for big john duran yeah. I, I was thinking today i wonder what amy martinez is like as an outfield player because we know he's the ultimate sweeper keeper we know he's comfortable on both feet we know he likes to drop the shoulder and like you know i just <laughs> i'd love to see him you know like they don't i know when emery emery first started that they kind of had loads of training ground footage of him you know, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Do they? Do they still? I'm showing really showing my ignorance again. Do they share much training ground, ground footage? now? I'd just love to see him in a five side. I reckon he'd be. I think he'd be. Yeah, I reckon he'd be. I reckon he'd be be decent as well. Maybe they should do that if we if we get over the line and there's ten minutes left in the final game of the season, just give him a go in midfield or something. But no, I think he's fully fully deserved the acclaim, as did the whole team, because yeah. we, we were already in danger of getting to that spoil stage where. Beating Bournemouth today was was not not a home banker by any stretch, but the fact that we can do it and the fact that we can do it with a, a stretch squad, this was the banana skin for me today. So now I'm thinking, no, no, next week's the banana. <laughs> next week's the banana skin now against Chelsea because you know I'm like I don't like to get too carried away. But uh, what a week! Hello. What an absolutely remarkable week! Do you want to be shout outs while you still got it? Um, yeah, the shout out was just to a guy Ada from Smethwick. Um, who just came and said hello when he was watching the game at Villa Park the other day. Um, says he's not able to get to the games very often, um, but we keep him in touch with it with our unique brand of analysis. So uh, God bless him. <laughs> Suffering twice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was, um, I, I promised that I'd give him a shout out. So yeah. Up the Villa Raider. I've also got a shout out. I had a message from Billy this morning who uh, is running the, or has now run, I imagine she's finished the London Marathon today. Um, she messaged me to say that she listens to the podcast all the time and has, we've kept her company on her training runs. I uh, don't know whether we've done anything to spur her on to victory in the London Marathon, but uh, yeah, hopefully if she's listened to this, if she's a real fan of the show, then she will be. Uh, hopefully not too many sore legs. <laughs> which sounds like she's got more than two if she has she'll have got a record time um, so yeah hopefully uh, hopefully the London Marathon wasn't too difficult I can't yeah I wouldn't fancy that at all do you want to do the outro just for novelty reasons <laughs> you won't do it yeah, you do. right thank you for watching Claret and Blue at the end of a momentous week for Aston Villa and the start of hopefully another <laughs> momentous week or month for Aston Villa um, yeah you've been watching Claret and Blue with Daniel Rowlinson Matthew Kendrick and old John Rollington sat in the corner who's behaved himself and uh, give us some moral support. So, yeah, until next time, up the bloody villa. <laughs>